Welcome to Contractor Fight TV. I'm excited to talk about this topic today. Just like the title says, what does it cost for you to operate your business for one hour? Let's figure that out. Furry friends, have you ever wondered what you need to charge? A lot of you are on here. In fact, I did a video because so many people are like, hey, what's the going rate for a door or paint job or building a house? Here's the thing. The going rate doesn't matter. It's not your problem. Your problem is you need to understand your numbers, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So today I'm going to actually, we're going down and dirty. I'm going to give you the formula to help you figure out what it costs for you to operate your business for one man hour. And then I'm also going to show you a way to figure out what you should be charging. Time out! I understand there are multiple ways to figure out what the fuck you should be charging. So those of you right now that are sitting in your recliner with your porn minimized on one window and this video up on another, before you get all judgmental and stuff like that, I understand there's millions of softwares and there's different ways to recover overhead. What we're talking about here today is really for the guy who has no fucking clue how the math of a business works, okay? This is bare bones, basic, just how to figure out what the hell I should price. And so I wanna walk you guys through 10 calculations you need to do. All you need is a pen and a calculator and in five minutes, you'll know what you need to charge. Down in the description, there is a link where you can get our, what the fuck do I need to charge per hour worksheet or whatever we're gonna call it, okay? We're gonna have that available for free for you guys. So you can just print it off. You can print the thing off, fill in some boxes with your calculator and your pen or pencil, and you will literally know exactly what to charge. So here, I'm gonna walk you through this. We'll put some numbers on the screen here, I don't know, over here, or down there, Ooh, not down there, not, no room down there. All right, no <laughs> Box A, the first thing you need to know, you're gonna write down, is how many field employees do you have? How many people work on the job site? If it's you and a guy, put two. If you don't, and you got two guys in the field, put two. And today for our math, guess what we're gonna use, Noel? Two, there you go. All right, next box. B, box B on our worksheet, you're gonna take 1,700 billable hours times whatever you wrote in box A, which is two. Why 17? Well, listen, if you wanna pay somebody a couple weeks of vacation in the year, uh, you know, this and that, the average employee, seasonalities, all this garbage, you're around 1,900 to 2,000 man hours, but in the trades, because of seasonality, because of non-billable hours like a company meeting, you're still, you still gotta pay for that shit, right? Um, but you're not charging a customer. So we take about 90, 95% of those 2000 hours or so to get 1700. Don't worry about how we got there. Just use the 1700 and you'll be safe. All right. So in our case, it's two times 1700. You write in 3,400. That's how many man hours you have for capacity in the year with your two employees. Hopefully that makes sense. You can't do any more work than that. That's what you can do. Box C, what is your annual overhead? God knows how many videos and, and things we've done here in the fight to help explain what overhead is. Overhead <clears throat> is what needs to be paid in the business even if we don't do a job this week or this month or this year. You still have bills to pay. You have the cable for the office. You have the rent for the office if you have an office. You have the truck payments. You have your salary. Your salary is not net profit. Net profit is net profit. Your salary is a cost of doing business. Okay, so you gotta be in there. So we've talked about that. Add all that shit up. For the sake of our video here today, we're just gonna write an annual overhead of $150,000. Some of you are going, holy shit, Tom. But guys, listen, if you're not making 100 grand as a contractor, 100 grand of that 150 should be your fucking money. All right? So we're building this thing on you making 100 grand. Then you got another 50 grand for marketing, whatever, the, whatever you else, else you got in there, okay? So 150,000, box D, what is your net profit goal? I don't like setting a percentage. I like setting a money goal. I like going after I'm paid, the guys are paid, all the bills are paid. How much money do I want left? Do you want 10 grand? Do you want 50 grand? Do you want 150 grand? Doesn't matter, it's your damn goal. For the math here, we just put 50,000 in the box. 
Now here's the cool thing, box E, you add your annual overhead, which here is 150,000, and you add your net profit goal, which is 50,000, and you write 200,000 in box E. See how simple this is? You could even do this without these boxes. You can do it with a spiral notebook right now. Box F. Now you're gonna add up the hourly wages of your crew. In our case here, we got two guys that are in the field. Now, time out. Some of you might be going, well, I got, a, I got this person who works in the office and I pay that person to answer the phones and do some admin work and this and that. They should be in your overhead amount. Okay, so we were just talking field employees. So here, let's say we got Sam at 25 an hour, we got Joe at 20 an hour. Add that together, you get 45 bucks an hour. Now I want you to take that number. When you add up all the wages of the people that you wrote in box A, you had two people, write their wages, add it up and multiply times 1.4. Why 1.4? Because you have to pay some payroll taxes and workers comp on those employees and you're basically saying, what is that wage? And you're tacking on 40%. That's generally a safe number. Your number might be different. Talk to your bookkeeper, your accountant, whatever. For the sake of our example here, 25 an hour plus 20 an hour is 48, 45 an hour times 1.4 gives us $63. Then you're gonna divide that in box G by the number of people in box A. And it's all spelled out in the worksheet, by the way. So if you take 63 an hour divided by two people, your average wage per field hour that you're paying out is 3150. Guys, we just got a couple more calculations to do here and you're done. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take C, your annual overhead, and you're gonna divide it by the number of hours in the year in B. It gives us $44.12. That's what you have to charge per man hour just to pay for the overhead not even their wage yet, okay? This is why a lot of guys are broke in the trades because they don't understand what we're doing right here. So pay attention right here, okay? Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your net profit goal of 50,000 and divide it by those same 3,400 hours of capacity. And in this case, it comes to $14.70. If you would like to make a net profit, you would need to tack on $14.70 per man hour bid on the job onto that overhead amount. So when we add, check this out, when we add the 44.12 for the overhead and the 14.70 for the net profit goal, you get 58.82. That's what you have to charge minimum per man hour and you haven't even paid the guys in the field yet. <laughs> Some of you just like peed yourselves a little. I know I did the first time I heard that. Now we're gonna do this, you're gonna take that hourly amount of 3150 that you pay your guys in the field and you're going to add that to the 4412 for what you got to charge per hour in your overhead and you're going to add that to the net profit or the net profit goal to that of 1470 it gives you a grand total of $90.32 and in box J the final box here I tell you round it up to the nearest dollar okay so in this case you're going to round up don't ever round down round up to 91 bucks an hour so what we've done here is we figured that if you're gonna send a cat to work in the field for one man hour, that'll never happen. There's never a one hour job, right? But if you got a one hour job and you're sending Billy out there or Sam or Joe, one of our guys at 20, 25 bucks an hour, the way we did the math here, you have to charge at least $91. That pays him, that pays money, 58, 82 or whatever it was towards overhead and that gives you a net profit of 14, 15 bucks an hour if he finishes the job in that hour. If he goes over the hour, this is why it's important to know our production rates and job costs and make sure we're finishing things on time, it starts coming out of the profit, costing you money, and it's a big mess and you're broke. So guys, a couple things to wrap this up. <clears throat> make sure you get this, sheet, this worksheet. Hit the description and get the worksheet. It's super easy. When you estimate the man hours on your next project. The next bid that comes in, simply take the hours that you're estimating on that job and multiply it times that number that you got. So let's say your next bid, you go out and you figure up, you're like, it's gonna take this long for that, it's gonna take this long for that. You estimate 48 man hours. Take that 48, and if we just use our example, you can take 48 man hours, times 91 bucks. 
that comes out to $4,368. That's what you have to charge just for the labor. Then add whatever you're charging for materials or permits or rental equipment and blah, blah, blah. Add that to the labor charge and then that's the grand total of the job. But the $4,368, if we did 48 times 91, 4368, 4368, that would pay for Sam and Joe in the field. That would pay the 5882 times whatever 48, that amount of money would go toward your overhead recovery. And the 91 hours times 1470, whatever that is, I didn't do the math on that one. That is your net profit. And your net profit is the fucking pat on the back financially that you get for running a strong business. So guys, don't sell yourself short on this money stuff. Take the time, do the math. We created a super simple tool for you here. Use the thing. And like I said earlier in, in our crazy disclaimer, there are more than one ways to, ways to skin a cat. I totally get that. However, if you don't truly learn just the bare basic ways, then you're gonna get more confused as you go on and learn different ways for you to price your work. Appreciate you guys being here. I gotta rock. No, I don't. I gotta roll. You guys rock. I gotta roll. See you next time on Contractor Fight TV. I know. I got it right once last time we were here. <laughs>